time. Okay. Well, thanks for the recording. Time will start now. Part one is the framework. One is gender oppression. The basic point is capital G gender. Gender equals uh, gender is the social categorization of bodies based on behaviors, appearances, etc. Into men and non-men. Like it is grounded in class struggle and helps justify the exploitation of non-men in the first place. The basic point is going to be monopoly capitalism. Mon capitalism upholds the gender sex binary to because uh, uh, utilitar like because uh, it's utilized to create ex the exploitation of non-male labor. For example, the need for pre free reproductive labor leads to the idea that non-men quote unquote naturally have a place in the home, forcing them to be housewives. The double is also going to be that like for example the lead for like um in, uh, the need for like indigenous land and labor for, led to the like the uh, the elimination of their like uh elimination of new queer and indigenous grammars just to exploit uh, like just to um just to advance imperialism and genocide the second argument is going to be that of two line struggle two line struggle teaches us that within like the part and the other phenomena there's always like sorry within any aspect there are always two opposing trends existing one pushing and the other restraining this is the concept of dialectical materialism dialectics refer to every phenomenon st is splitting into two antagonistic contradictions for example yeah. gender, we have the uh i'll take it at the end we have the we have the antagonism between men and non-men, the little eyes that under the capitalist imperialist status quo, all phenomenon splits into one contradiction that represents the proletariat and the other one representing the bourgeoisie, which means that any idea, uh, uh, approaching any idea or question also splits into two lines, pro uh, the proletarian ideological line and the bourgeois ideological line. This is also the re this is also going to be the internal link to all other forms of oppression because the proletarian and the bourgeois ideological line is what uh, the, the, uh, justifies who who is dehumanized and who isn't dehumanized because the ability to get access to material resources like food, water, and housing are specifically controlled by capitalism in the first place, which means those who don't get access to those resources are basically justified in being dehumanized by the capitalist market. The double I under this is that this means that truth, D DM is, sorry, dialectical materialism is required to discover truth because otherwise you collapse into massive transcendentalism. Like this is the entire reason as to why like some white Americans literally define themselves as indigenous because absent of a correct class analysis of the ability to, uh, the, the, the ability to understand the like specific like under uh, the bourgeois class analysis and ideologies of like the indigeneity, these uh, the, the dialectical, anti-dialectical materialist analysis fails. The basic point is going to be bourgeois feminism since feminism, uh, like, uh, so since the result of like, uh, sorry, the, uh, since this feminism is basically the result of capitalism, uh, the, since feminine oppression is the result of capitalism folding non-men into economic production and thus politicizing them, like all ideologies produced by cap, it has a central contradiction and splits into, feminism splits into two lines of bourgeois and proletarian feminism. This is a point to be debate. The even debate is a process of competing ideologies and thus dialectical materialist line struggle. They literalize weren't is T framework. T framework ran against this specific K would, rep would represent the bourgeois line in debate because by forcing us to confirm to the res, would they basically force us to defend a class dictatorship and imperialism slash capitalism. The role of the ballot is to vote for the team that best engages in proletarian line struggle against bourgeois feminism. Why? Uh, I'll take it at the end. Sorry, I have a lot to get through. The harms. One is going to be that of bourgeois per pacifism, which supports the idea that pacifist residence, I mean, resistance somehow helps the proletariat defend against capitalism. Literally, this resolution is about how peaceful resistance helps us align with democracy as opposed to militant resistance, which is not a very great idea, especially when you're supposed your uh, your supposed uh, 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 defensive pacifism literally leads to support of liberal organizations like the PSL and murderous organizations like the Black Hammer. This is also what leads to the rise of legal cooperation with the bourgeoisie. If everyone literally just follows the idea that they can use legal systems and political uh, peaceful political activism to solve everything. In a legal system where gender minorities do not have any say and their rights are constantly being taken away by the bourgeoisie. This heat point is also going to be that this supports the idea of democracy and democratic reform, which is constantly used to justify literal bombings in the Middle East and thus spread bourgeois capitalism. The second argument is going to be that of incrementalism. Co cooperation with democratic bourgeois reform always supports the fucking asshole liberals that cause that the ace point is that uh, dem representative demo democracy is not real. The oh, sorry, representative democracy is not real. Black, brown, and indigenous communities, as well as gendered minorities, are constantly barred from voting through felony charges, incarceration rates, etc while rich capitalists have a much higher access to democracy than any other group. This means a reification of democracy only serves to, uh, like, uh, I'm sorry, exists to serve bourgeois interests. This is why senators like Rick Martin in Florida were literally able to scam the shit out of Florida, uh, Floridian citizens and gain massive capital and still are able to vote and run for fucking election while 25% of gender minorities and, like, uh, uh, like lowering, uh, like, spe specifically, like, marginalized communities are barred from voting in the state of Florida, which is why, specifically, like, democracy and democratic reforms always only serves capitalism and thus gender depression. The impact. That the sole impact is that of trans misogyny. Specifically, we see the ace point is based we cross apply all the framework points. Capitalism necessitates the creation of capital G gender. The recent point is going to be that of violence. The creation and naturalization of gender is used to justify trans misogyny for those who don't fit in. The ace point is that this creates social marginalization because trans, uh, uh, specifically, like uh, transness is con uh, constructed as unnatural and undesirable to be uh, deny value to life and justify its flirt. The basic point is going to be that of, sorry, the double I is going to be that of ma material exploitation with, because it aids capitalist imperialism in extracting surplus value of labor. Francis Thompson, a black trans woman who helped uh, testify in the legal system about violence. 
violence done to her has had a lot of skepticism cast on her the, uh, a story which is used to justify anti-black violence. This is one going to be that of access debates, bourgeois class bases, it leads to a saturation of male chauvinism and trans misogyny in the activity, which is entirely why uh, the coaching class and tournament fees makes uh, a debate much less accessible to like soiling non-men. Trans women in debate are structurally skewed out of debate as there's not only a lack of uh, overwhelming lack of trans women, but they're constantly misgendered and like it forces trans women to uh, constantly, consistently put up with harassment from competitors and, uh, and, uh, and judges from tournaments. The disappointment is also going to be excused excuse of uh, ideology okay. because absent advancing ma- Oh, okay. Absent advancing Maoism and thus proletarian feminism against male chauvinism, like trans misogyny with, uh, within debaters, uh, deba- uh, de- uh, debate, debaters learn and uphold like super uh, a- anti-queer and trans misogynistic education from the activity and how the debate space produces people like Ben Shapiro and Ted Cruz. The advocacy, vote affirmative to advance the revolutionary line of proletarian feminism. Vote affirmative to endorse the revolutionary line of proletarian feminism. It's the point is that, I mean, sorry, one is uh, proletarian feminism is key. The eighth point is male chauvinism. It purges male chauvinism by expelling members who engage within such as like, uh, within like specifically the base building and people's uh, uh, movement for uh, for protracted people's worthy because it requires continuous engagement in criticism and self-criticism, which uh, involves studying male chauvinism and creating decisions on how to find it. Both are key to root out male chauvinism. Expulsion without CSC leads to expelling innocence and see, uh, criticism, self-criticism without expulsion is a lo- uh, truthless ritual, which is why members like Seth Miller were literally able to like prove, uh, do uh, like engage in sexual violence and they only asked him to like write essays about himself in revolutionary groups which led to the constant reification of himself despite I mean, the, uh, the, the like you uh, are anti uh, sorry misogynistic of uh, the people within the movement the beast point is gonna be that of reactionary feminism not rooting chau- uh, chauvinism means that patriarchal violence continues and non men or liberal and revisionist reactionary feminism such as trf the c is gonna be that of base divide non men are a significant part of the population which is important since uh successful revolution uh, uh, efforts require the participation of the entirety of the people the disappointment is gonna be that philippines empirically proved the cpp used this process to purge anti career antagonistic lines leading to a contemporary army in the npa primarily being made of non men which was allowed to like specifically increase the amount of like specific uh, 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 specific Specific, like uh, rights for like queer people, and also has been the forefront at getting like specific rights for queer people within the Philippines. The second argument is going to be that advancing it in debate is key to generating critical education, which is key is to the impact of expanding access within debate. I can take your POI now. Yeah. So does the does your app endorse violence? Yes. Cool. Okay. Cool. Uh, order is two off. Uh, half an order. Okay. So um, let me get the first text ready real fast. The second text is going to be a little complicated to type out. So just I'll do the second text at the end of uh, uh, one and C. Where did I put it here? Put it here. Sorry, the auto correct keeps correcting all the debate words. <laughs> Okay, um, yeah, well, I'm gonna go. Cool, you can start my time. Now, interpretation, the 1AC must only defend the inaction of a topical fiat planted by the resolutional actor. The 1AC must only defend the inaction of a topical fiat planted by the resolutional actor. B is the violation. There are three here. Number one is that there is no actor in here. And the 1AC and the 1AC's advocacy. Number two is that they don't they use fiat to enact their uh, to enact their advocacy. Number three is that we told you that it's uniquely not topical. It's not talking. It's not talking about the resolution which was given to us for this round. See the standard towards limits. They can defend anything within the round and will the, uh, on the affirmative uh, through this line, through this lens, which means that we're uniquely not able to actually understand what they're going to go for. Limits are key to uh, are key to ground debate because it ensures that the F and negative to do equal work during the ballot two is topic education we tell you that with learning about the topic is uniquely key to the round we tell you that it, it creates more breadth of education breadth of education is key to the existence of partly because without breadth of education we're just similar to policy and ld which means the format uniquely collapses which just stops all of their education three is that it's key to solvency normalizing case in the debates uh, we, we, we normalizing uh, is that it's key to solvency we tell you that it normalizes like reading the same type of k in the debate space which uniquely stops all types of solvency because we told you that, like we've had these types of rounds before which means that it uniquely like skews out the education which is inherent in your k fourth is that of predictability we tell you that not talking about a 
uh, not talking about a tropical affirmative uniquely breaks the game. It requires us to prepare for something which we, which we don't actually know exists. The little A's that we told the disclosure is unverifiable. We don't know whether you actually disclosed this K in there. And even if you did, it wasn't a specific advocacy text. Five is that switch solve debate, uh, 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 switch side debating solves because you can just read this K on the neg and it would solve all of your impacts. Uh, the sixth argument is the TVA. You can inherently affirm this resolution uh, uh, under your advocacy and just say that like peace is inherently good under proletarian feminism. Uh, to use the voters. What is that education as a voter? Because you have to know the uh, education as a voter because it's the only reason debate gets funded in the first place and it's uniquely key to your solvency. The delays prefer impacts of game design because we told you that debate was uniquely designed to be an educational game. But if the game is not playable, we can't actually gain the education from a two of two. Is it fairness as a voter? Is fairness as a voter? Because without fairness, the game collapses. Everyone goes three three. Everyone goes three three and no one ever actually breaks the elims. Three is a priority. You have to know the rules of the game before you play it. Four drop the debate or deter future reviews. Five, no, I'm saying five community interpretation goes re what's reasonably fair is arbitrary and budget intervention. Six is no RVI, so they deter legitimate theories. Uh, seven is that you told you should presume that because the hasn't met their burden of affirming the resolution. Next off. Then the next alt is is Votel Jota Don Felon Jarafa. Votel Jota Don Felon Jarafa. Uh, go go to the background. The first point of background is that we tell you that the our our counter advocacy is in uh, Irish Gaelic. Second, the second argument is that affirming Maoism in English is uniquely harmful. The little a is that of cult is that of culture death. The UK colonization of Ireland saw the suppression of Irish Gaelic in the in in the country, especially in that of prisons, which were trying to spread revolutionary sentiment. But the little b is that we tell you that it leads to the death of the resistance. If you read your advocacy in Ireland in Irish, members of the UK public and armed guards prevented you the use of Irish Gaelic within uh, schools, which means that militancy in English will always inherently view indigenous languages as counter-revolutionary, but the little sees that it's key to dialect and materialism because we tell you that if you don't understand actually the actual nuances of colonialism, you're always going to leave out the interconnected nature of things. The great uh, great example of this is that we tell you that uh, not not speaking in Irish Gaelic means that a lot of texts were lost on the role of the, the UK in the perpetuation of the, uh, of the the potato family. The third argument is that it solves the app. We just do what you do, except we do it in a better way, which isn't like harming... Um, which isn't harming um, colonized people. Go to the counter roll of the ballot. The counter roll of the ballot is to interrogate the desirability of the, pro of the proposed topical fiat at plant text. The counter roll of the ballot is to interrogate the desirability of the proposed topical fiat at plant text. Go to the, go to the, uh, the responses on framework. Um, the first response on framework is that we tell you that capitalism is not inherently the primary contradiction. The little and of this is that we tell you the understanding of material differences still exists under under communist economy, economies. We still view things differently uh, under the existence of communism. We still have like a hierarchical prioritization of what we view as important and what we don't view as important, which means that we tell you that even under a world of doing dialectic materialist analysis and like and like going towards a PBW, we aren't actually able to solve and understand or proletarian feminism. We aren't actually able to understand. We're still having like seeing what we prioritize as, which means that you're not inherently dialectic materialist, but also the dialectic materialism and Apparently fails. The second argument is just that dialectic materialism fails a little. A is that there's no bright line for interconnectedness. We can never succeed because you're always probably forgetting something. But the little b's that we tell you that there are an infinite number of primary and secondary and secondary contradictions. We would say that there's probably a better nuance analysis to them than to always say that capitalism or, or gender is inherently the primary contradiction. We tell you that there is an inherently like intersectional realities which people live in, i.e., that like colonization, colonization, culture, race, etc., probably also impacts these things as well, which means that prioritizing certain primary contradictions over others is always going to reify structures of oppression because it tells you what a Pressure is inherently more important than others. But the fourth argument is that predictions fail. We tell you, especially when it comes to military force, we tell you that a great, a great example of this is like Truman trying to do the trying to determine whether he wanted to bomb Japan in World War II or Bush trying to determine whether he wanted to invade Iraq, i.e., determinations of military force are always going to be biased by the information which we currently have access to, which means the AF, which means that the AF is always going to fail because we don't know whether we're doing a good revolution or not, because we don't have the right predictions to do so, which means you can already presume neg. But the fifth argument is that debate is terminally non solvable for the arguments which they're talking to you about. We tell you that you have you and other debaters have read this K in the space before and we haven't seen any solvency. We've had debates about uh, we've had debates about like like the malice uh, the malice slide or poetry and feminist line before, which means that we tell you that debate is probably a non-solvent place for this, but the little A's that it impacts out to exhaustion because uh, it impacts out to exhaustion because the constant desire to develop more and more critical literature incentivizes the uh, incentivizes a race to the bottom where debaters are spending more and more time on critical literature, which means that they're like doing things like not eating in between rounds um on their specific framework arguments. Um I already said they aren't intersectional. They said that they they talk to you about they talk to you about bourgeois feminism. We would probably tell you that Maoist feminism Maoist feminism feminism is also uniquely not going to solve. Look to the fact that Maoist movements also uniquely viewed women as only forces uh, and women and non-men as only uh, forces for uh, like, like reproductive care or caring in the home. Like the war for this is like Maoist management of the birth policy in China, which probably tells you that they have no ability to solve if they tell you their 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 proletarian feminist lies uniquely based in Maoism. Um, they talk to you about uh, uh, about only doing bourgeois feminism. We told you that we probably solve for this because we include their movement in ours on the links. 
two link terms. One is that we told you that you struck for this topic. You uniquely relink because you wanted to debate this topic so that you can gain access to links. That's probably bad because it's normalizing the exact type of violence that you talk about. But secondly, we told you that the, the, the topic creators don't actually know that you didn't affirm this topic, which means people think that you affirmed this topic and they're going to continue creating more of these types of topics in the future, which just reifies the structures of oppression you're talking about. On the links, first they talk to you about the idea that it's a, that it's a supporting of liberalism. We say, no, you could probably do exactly what you're talking about just as an active proletarian feminism. Crossify the TBA here. Then they tell you that gender minorities are going to be taken. Uh, 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 then they tell you that like the people's revolution is uh, uh, you're portraying that the people's revolution is good. We tell you, no, you can affirm this resolution in other ways. You could read other ways in which capitalism is not going to be solved. You don't need to do this. You just uh, you don't need to affirm the resolution in the way you're talking about on the impacts. We'll concede their impacts, but we'll, we'll, read, we'll read some impact, impact turns of our own. Well, one number one is that we tell you that capitalism is uniquely good for the environment. The little a is that a study into desertification found that areas with higher rates of private property saw less desertification. The little b is that we tell you that a study from Tianjin University found that a 1% increase in green energy investment saw 8.5% decrease in carbon emissions. The little c is that the Washington Times finds that green energy is uniquely key to reducing carbon emissions. The little d is that we tell you that the, the world is dying in the status quo. We tell you that phytoplankton loss is going to lead to extinction, and we need to reduce carbon emissions by 50% by, by 2030. We tell you that a Stanford paper found that there were over 100 different countries which could adapt to meet this goal, but we tell you that we need time and we need the ability to do that other policymaking now. That means that policymaking is uniquely able to solve in the status quo and the liberals and arguments they're talking about are uniquely able to solve on the alt. The first argument is that we told you that Mao's increased imperialism, like how Mao started wars against India and explicitly said that he was doing this because it was seen as a soft target to unite the party. But the second argument, the argument is that we told you that Maoism explicitly skews women out. We told you that the Naxalite party in India had women in leadership, but they were less likely to receive support during, uh, support during persecutions from the government. Make them come up here and actually endorse specific movements which they're supporting. But the second argument is that you don't get any epistemological access. The one is like Mao killing sparrows for literally no reason just to unify his party, which means that we told you that resource exploitation is, is, is going to happen still under your world and you aren't able to solve climate change. But the third argument is that you're bad for the environment. The little a is that they tell you the revolution takes time, which means you don't are able to solve on time. B is the point is that the state pressures your movement because it's inherently based in bourgeois feminism and the status quo, like how Agent Orange happened. The little C is that we told the state going to pressure movement. The warrant is the popular 15M movement saw a 15% decrease in popular support through one instance of street violence, which means that you aren't able to solve for your impacts because the state crushes you. Go ahead, Natic. Hey, Sorry. Um, low key, the Wi Fi in my house is like kind of really bad, so would it be okay if I get it to turn off the camera just because we're about quality? Yeah, that's fine. Hey, judges, is one of you, is one of you, wait a minute, Henry, Henry's talking. Oh, open the phone. Oh, sorry, I was on mute. Yeah. Sorry, judges, is one of you all timing people or like, or just also, I guess it's also to debaters, like you are timing yourselves, right? Because like I just, yeah, if you have, like, okay, okay. I, I assume you also have you also have incentive to enforce this against your opponent, so I just, just to make sure. Yeah. Sophia, I'm taking the text. Give me a sec. Okay, yeah, no, for sure. Um, order will just be T framework, linguistic pick, and then the F. And then I'm doing the balance. No, no, no. T framework F linguistic. Okay, sorry, T framework F linguistic pick. Cool. And F will just be probably top down in the same order they read it. Is anyone not ready? Oh, actually, um, one second. Sorry. Can we get the text of the counter of the? Oh, yep. you did. Can I get the one more time? Sorry, I was typing that out. Sorry, say that. Oh, order. Um, T framework, F, then counter plan. But we're good to go. Wait, can, we can't hear you if someone's talking. Can other people hear me? Yeah, I, I can hear you. Okay, so I do not hear Evergreen speaking. Yeah. So. Oh, wait, sorry, Sophia's moving to her room. She The Wi-Fi cut out. Okay, you're good. Sorry about that. Should we just start at the top again or something? 
We got the order, so we're good to go. But I'm back. Sorry about that. Someone can mute. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll just start over from the beginning. Okay. Time is going to start. Now, the counter-interpretation the counter -interpretation is the one AC must defend breaking capitalism and pluralism through the proletarian feminism line. The first kind of standard here is going to be that solves all your offense. The interpretation is only limited to our app. We can only defend proletarian feminism where that solves 100% of your predictability, limits, and truisms options. The second is going to be Nazi topics. We told you that your interpretation isn't specific to the resolution. So under your interpretation, we'll always have to defend resolutions, even when they're racist and sexist, which is going to be really, really bad because that means you can just basically read free impact terms that kill our ability to engage in the debate if our ground is consistently impact which means the neg wins every single time. The third going to be is going to accessibility. We're going to tell you that like small, we're going to tell you that like small schools get to like start big schools generations of backfiles by reading new and innovative and case good case that they like practice and they know really really well voters the first voters here to be critical education this is always uh, policy education because it's more possible we interact with superstructures every single day of our lives but we're not like capitalism but not everyone passes policies the second is going to be that fairness is not unique the different speech times uh, means that like different speech times and different like skewed resumes that like fairness is always going to be terminally non-unique and we're going to tell you that this is also the case because the validity of an argument is based on how it's responded to so if the pmr gets good in terms and no one gets to respond we can't truth test it and the pmr doesn't get good in terms and we can't truth test the block because they get to make all the new responses they want so a here says that having access to the topic doesn't do shit to limit accessibility you don't get a list of words to prep out before the round and truth test there's no way can say that topic is uniquely good. And the B point is it's also not unique because the flow is not inevitable. The fact that there are split decisions proves that the flow can never be judged perfectly objectively. The point is to be yes, cross applications because they're infinitely aggressive. There's no true actual definition of what a cross application is. Is it just like rereading the same argument or is it the same yeah. cross apply? And the A point is like, again, you can just classify the fact that we don't have a list of warrants so we can't truth test. Clear? Okay. The force is going to be layering. We're going to try the K out layers of T for a few reasons. The first is going to be dialectic materials. We're going to be winning the dialectic materials and stuff on the ash shell. We're going to say the topicality is always about looking for a truth. So if you can't generate truth absent, the, um, um, the, um, so you have to like, look at, we can't generate truth absent, you have to have the absence of key. The B point is going to be line struggle. We're going to tell you that we're winning that proletarian line struggle is a process of debate, which means that you reject T framework as it's a bourgeois line in debate, which means that they don't get access to the fairness excuse about framework because it's relying on them getting access to their argument, which to their inter, which line struggle frames out. And then finally, the things that you can cross apply transmissage. This goes conceded from the impact scenario on the app, which is going to be really, really important because before we even enter the debate space or round, um, there's always going to be structural skis like the debate pace to out non-men of these spaces from sexual assault, casual misogyny, and bad interpretations of anti-capitalist and feminist practices, um, which is a prior question to their procedural fairness arguments. Okay, let's go into the uh, show proper. What? POI. I'll take it at the end if I have time, sorry. Go to the show proper. The first is that we meet their show. The one is that like there is like their 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 interpretation is uniquely flawed. Like one, there's no actor in the one AC's advocacy. There's no actor in the resolution in general. There's no resolution or actor as a thing. The second point is that like we don't use like we do. They say that we don't use fiat, but what? Okay, these are inter flaws, which means that their interpretation never works. The second is that we we do use fiat. Like we don't feel like an endorsement. We like. It's not like fiat is like a plan passing, but we feel an endorsement of proletarian feminism as a revolutionary line. Anyways, um. And the interflows are probably uniquely key because we tell you that like interns are the way that they're supposed to set norms for all of debate, which means that this generates loopholes, which means that their interv never works. Onto limits, we tell you we solve for limits on a topic where we tell you that depth is better than education when like um uh, uh uh because because like it's better to know one thing really well than like a ton of things um um deep and a ton of things like nothing at all we tell you that like also like your education is bad policy education is literally bad and if it reifies structures like um capitalism and imperialism they tell you that dogmatic dogmatism is, is but we tell you that like the net can read like multiple avenues of testing that solve back for dogmatism we test it against for example this their language pick that we haven't like hit before with this k the fourth is we predictability we tell you that predictability is non-unique there's infinite small apps and also like we solve for the predictability evidence anyways this is switch like the base solves we tell you that no you just classify our harms like there's still reasons as to why you should you should you should be rejecting this line in debate and finally they tell you tba that we can like read peace under proletarian feminism but proletarian feminism is literally a line for organizing the maoist line that will inevitably result in like people's war there's no way we can advocate for peace and people's war that's nonsensical we're just gonna classify the arguments until like debate is game design we tell you uh we tell you this is so like this is a matter like we operate like within the games and we also create resolution they tell you it's april we tell you like classify our layering times we also do you don't need to know the rules of the game before you can play the game like i don't know monopoly the rules of monopoly on the back of my hand but i can still play monopoly they say no rbis whatever they say presume neg we tell you like no like um we tell you, like, know like, the fact that they are not like doing their burden of negating they're like actively advocating for counter advocacy one means that presumptive flag is, is going to flip af um let's go to their uh af okay 
the first thing they tell you is like the first thing they tell you guys I'm a dialect of materialism doesn't work for a few reasons. We tell you this is um they say that we even in DM we don't solve proletarian problems. This is just literally like not true. We tell you that like, there are contradictions in the communist movement. We don't deny that and, and Madison died. The question is a status quo. Like dialect of materialism is still key to like organizing around the status quo and resolving those contradictions at the very first place. Like that just was uh that just is the way that we like look at different lines and see that they're antagonistic and therefore we know that which antagonism the different necessity of revolution and therefore we know that which one is the truth. They tell you that there's no bright line to interconnectedness. We tell you like that's like there's like multiple like secondary contradictions like the one primary contradiction is capitalism and that doesn't mean we ignore the secondary contradictions of gender it doesn't mean we ignore the secondary contradiction of race or like or, or colonialism that just means that we look we you understand are. how capitalism influences the other, these other secondary contradictions that's exactly why we're reading gender i'll take it at the end if i have time we engage in critical self study which we, csc which means that we solve back where their all, entire arguments of like uh this doesn't work like we we understand interconnectedness. we understand nuance we are about intersections between capitalism and other contradictions they told the DM fails and that like uh that that that, that like prioritizing one contradiction like reifies oppressions, but we that we show that's not true. Like DM is just a nuanced understanding of how they all interact, but also understanding how capitalism is a priority and that capitalism is internally to life because like extend their point about how it controls like all material reality, like it, it, it controls like how we shape our lives. They tell you that there's no determin like there's they tell you that like a determination of military force is biased by the info we have access to, so we don't solve in like both um negative perception, but one like perception flips up and two, like we have empirical solvency for how this has worked in the past. Um, they tell you that debate is a bad place for this. We tell you that you can literally cross apply all these arguments onto their little counter advocacy. Like their counter advocacy probably isn't gonna solve all colonialism in Ireland either if you buy this argument. But we tell you like speech acts still have like meaning. Like we still are defending and spending education. They tell you that Maoist feminism won't stop as Mao, like view people like that because of birth policy in China. We tell you that was after like Deng Xiaoping took take took over. That was like after revisionist forces already influenced the CPC. And also there's a distinction between Maoism and like and what Mao did. Maoism was literally generated like decades after Mao and his revolution. It was generated by like the Peruvian People's Party. Like there's and, and regardless of that, like DM self corrects for any mistakes. And then let's go to harm. They tell you that we structured for this topic and we link because we wanted to debate this. We tell you no, like like we like 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 one, we did stricken this topic to like reject it still advances the revolutionary line regardless and two like all of the topics are probably like imperialist in any way so it's just like choosing our things so the topic framers don't know that we can affirm this topic we say they read rfds and this round is also being recorded for everyone to view um they tell you the tba we already responded to the tba let's go into the solvency the first solvency they uh or the extent or impacts of trans misogyny skewing access and that being a prior question to everything else in the debate that goes conceded um, they tell you that capitalism is good for environment we tell you no like capitalism necessitates a profit motive which is always going to be that capitalism like co corporation is always going to profit um for this private over everything else we're telling you like the ussr has worn that's why like communists usually solve this how like they were like they 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 built tons of like green energy and things like that and coach uh they tell you um okay the co corporation literally Funded twenty five million dollars into like opposition groups. They tell you that like, green energy is key. We tell you green energy like doesn't work in capitalism because it always leads to rare earth mineral mining, which always increases more environmental destruction. Yeah. Um, sorry, what? Clear. Okay, sorry. We always like rare earth like minor, mineral mining always leads to more environmental destruction. Onto the solvency, you probably literally just like Stanford. Stanford is a bad citation. Like I don't, it's literally capitalist. Stanford has like billions of dollars in their endowment funds. So to their advocacy. What is that you want to extend how like you literally just want to extend all of our warrants like they don't actually interact with any of our advocacy about how PF is like proletarian feminism is key to real about chauvinism reactionary feminism is all basified and how it's empirically key. They talk about like Mao, but again we like classify warrants about the distinction between Mao and Maoism, and we also chose Indian bureaucratic capitalism that led to the entire conflict between Mao and India in the very first place. Um, and yeah, I answered their like. Uh, we also yeah, extended like trans misogyny outwards under the counter advocacy perm um but sang like um we, i would say like like citing this in manner disrupts like linguistic imperialism and things in gender like and like the perfect the uh of uh, uh, the the, what? <laughs> the saturation of english in debate even more we also take the um capitalism controls the internal link to linguistic imperialism and this entire like um uh, and the entire colonization that's going on right now we need access to revolutionary spirit everyone needs to be able to access it and while like, also you can only like truly do decolonize the process through like embracing gender as well deconstructing gender um, we, inevitable. And state is inevitable because like our empirics prove, Philippines have proved, Mozambique has proved, Angola has proved, like USSR, now China has proved before revisionists got them. All right, the order is gonna be down the F. Uh, so yeah, we'll go to framework then cover the advocacy which one? Oh yeah okay the yeah so it's gonna be framework on the app and then the uh, advocacy on the app then it's gonna be the counter plan all right ready here on top or yeah kind of on top okay yeah uh, we'll start with your on top my time we'll start 
Please don't start yet. I want to just clarify you're saying topicality framework with solvency arguments of the affirmative and then the tick. Yeah? Yes. Okay, thank you. Sorry if any, there's any confusion. All right. Uh, I'm a little sick, so feel free to clear or slow me or anything if you need to. My time and PY is verbal. My time will start now. First on the theory, we kick the theory. Cool. On the extend the we meet. Uh yeah, extend the we meet on okay. the theory. Keep going. Okay, yeah, extend the we meet on the theory. Um, all right, on the framework. Okay. Um, first on the framework, they concede the role of the ballot. Uh, they concede the counter role. Uh, no, they don't extend the role of the ballot. So you're gonna be flowing through the counter role of the ballot on the framework. You're gonna be. Uh, they tell you that like they are able to understand all infinite contradictions, but they literally don't tell you how they're able to understand these contradictions to the point where they tell you themselves that capitalism is stopping them from understanding all of these contradictions, probably by they don't understand the contradictions, and therefore they aren't able to solve for these other contradictions. They tell you that solving some contradictions isn't going to hurt others, but this is simply false. Look to the example of how like uh, feminists in the early feminist movement like uh, excluded um, minor, gen, uh, excluded racial minorities from their like get out the vote movements. So uh, attempting to solve certain contradictions while not understanding other contradictions will always fail and will always result in like increasing those other contradictions. The Mao birth warrant also is conceded. The Mao birth warrant goes conceded here, um, which tells you like examples of Maoism also fail. Okay. Um, they tell you that uh, dialectic materialism is like, uh, actually, no. Okay. We're going to go to the solvency you're going to extend the turn where we tell you the capitalism causes you for causes uh solves for deforestation we give you the one percent to three percent statistic here their response here is really damning because they tell you that like building green energy and all this stuff causes environmental destruction but then the example the only example they give you as to how maoism or or mlm solves for these issues of the environment is itself environmental destruction like when the uh, when the Soviet Union built green technology, like they were also doing deforestation to build that. They were also mining and they were like exploiting workers when they did that. Cool. Also looks at how the USSR literally like cut the whale population of the South Pacific in half due to its extreme whaling. So Mao does not, uh, or um, Marxism does not solve for these issues of ex of exploitation of the environment. Extend that led to extin extinction because everyone does. Uh, extend that led to extinction because like the, uh, the extinction of like species leads to human extinction. No, phytoplankton 2030, like climate change. Oh, okay, okay. So yeah, extended climate change uh, leads to extinction. So like literally under their alt, they're causing the extinction of all of humanity uh, because like uh, getting rid of marine ecosystem leads to like phytoplankton extinction and phytoplankton is key to the entire marine ecosystem. There's a cycle there. Okay, on the alt. They concede a few things here, which are really damning. The first is that they concede the state crushes movement argument. We'll flush this out more. The state crushes movement argument tells you that the state is like the state is going to has a monopoly on violence right now and is going to basically nuke the movement wherever it is. We see that, like the state has enough nukes to nuke the entire world and probably will if they're facing total destruction. The state will do anything possible, including like killing off its entire population. So uh, at the very least here, like even if one human survives, you're not going to be able to stop the uh, the climate change because like if you use a million nukes, you're going to heat up the planet simply too much for it to resolve we tell you that the greenhouse effects like takes uh like happens at two degrees celsius and any amount of nukes is going to get you to that point and so once you get to the greenhouse effect there's no turning back so you've ruined the environment uh and you're leading to uh extinction terminally there's no responses here don't let them respond to it in the pmr extend the disadvantage around imperialism they don't respond to this we tell you that all instances of, of, of mlm in the past have resulted in imperialism again this goes to the point in which like this is a clear example as to how ignoring certain contradictions in your movement will result in failure like ignoring contradictions of imperialism leads to um le like uh stalin uh, invading kyrgyzstan or afghanistan leads to mao invading tibet and nepal and bhutan and all these areas which are and like forcibly uh converting them this like we're going to get to how that really links hard into the cp and like Give us offense there. Anything else on the solvency? Um, oh, extend the no solvency uh, take out here. We tell you this K has been read before. They tell you that like there are unique versions of this K, but they themselves have probably read this K before. And like to the point where there is zero solvency generated from any example of a K being read in the past, you're probably going to believe like strength of link here is incredibly low to the point where they have to prove like some bare chance of solvency, but they can't give you a warrant as to why their K, have them explain to you why their K is different than other people's Ks. They can't give that to you. And they, they don't get to. Um, Cool. I'll, I'll extend this analysis that it's a race to the bottom on critical literature. Uh, reading more Ks, especially how they tell you, like, oh, we made a small change in our K. Like, the idea of reading more Ks and making tiny changes, like, with the hope that you're going to win another round leads to people just, like, uh, having to do infinitely large amounts of research and, like, ignoring their bodily needs because of that. I can cover the counter roll of the ballot really quickly. Okay. Um, they don't, like, w at least when we read TUSFG, we're talking about the topical fiat Atlantic, so we're doing more interrogation under our roll of the ballot than they are because they aren't reading topical fiat Atlantic. 
Uh, yeah, at least under when we read TSFG, we're doing some interrogation of the plan text because we're like looking at the fairness that's generated from the plan text and the education generated from the plan text. So compared to their role about where they ignore the plan text entirely. So the topical education we gained there. Um, cool. Sorry. On the counter plan. Yeah. No, keep going. Sorry. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. On the counter plan, uh, they t they give you a perm here, which is in Mandarin, I think. I, I don't know what the perm <laughs> is. Uh, they tell you that like cap capitalism controls the internal link to linguistic imperialism, but we specifically tell you that ling the language you speak in when you try to solve these issues is what causes the issues. So like the fact that capitalism generates its harms through language is a reason why you're going to be buying the CP, right? We tell you that capitalism, like for the, with the example of Gaelic, that capitalism... Uh, is uh, reveals itself through language and that like uh, English guards using English uh, were like, and, and the Maoist movement that that was in English was like causing harm to Gaelic individuals. So we tell you that when you use certain languages, which capitalism has shaped, you are unable to solve capitalism. That's why you have to uh, buy the counter plan. That's why you have to believe you use these um, languages. Also the perm, like they don't, they literally don't explain to you how this perm is doing the counter plan. It's a different language, so. They've also conceded Mao is imperialist, which means they've probably conceded that the language they're reading it is imperialist. Oh yeah, they also conceded the argument that Mao is imperialist, so they've conceded the idea that the language they read their uh, advocacy in is imperialist. The perm does not solve the imperialism of the advocacy. Like, reading it, the, the perm is a test of competition, it's not an advocacy, and so reading a different perm in Mandarin does not solve for the issue of their advocacy being imperialist, doesn't take out the DI. Um... Hey, Larry, is there any more? Um... analysis? Let me see. Go back and extend. Go back on the alt and like concretize the ATAs on the alt, I guess. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> let's do a little more implication of the alt here. So the the terminal defense on the alt is the dis is the is twofold. The first is the, is the no solvency takeout, which we tell you the K has been read before, which means that so the implication here is that they have not given you analysis as to why their K is substantially different from other Ks, and so they aren't able to have any pre fiat or post fiat solvency. I mean, they don't fiat anything, so cool. Um, and then the second terminal solvency takeout here is that the state crushes the movement. They, they can't give you, uh, like the, the state at this point, which has nuclear weapons, has every incentive to take out a movement. If you're not, uh, if you're building, trying to build a movement which in an imperialist state that has nukes, you're always going to fail. And if you want to, like the bright line for them having solvency is that they need to convert the entire world to MLM. Uh, and they aren't able to do it in order to solve like the climate change issues, the DEI, anti-trans, uh, issues that they're talking about. They need to convert the entire world to MLM, and if they're not able to do that because the last imperialist state is going to nuke the entire world if they get the chance. Um, this also has infinitely large impacts. We tell you the extinction should be weighed above everything else because if there's no humans alive to experience anything, then they, then yeah, like you can't have any issues. And all the education, like takeouts they talk about, uh, we can't, like, there's no humans alive to generate education in the first place. So you're going to be weighing extinction impacts over that too. Uh, yeah. Uh, also extend this analysis about the, the second warrant here we give you on why Mao fails at feminism is the Naxalite uh, ar argument, which tells you that the Naxalite movement in India was not, uh, was less likely to appoint female members. And so again, like we give you a second example here as to why Maoist movements are failing at feminism. They can't give you a good reason as to why Maoist movements or their Maoist movement specifically is going to be better at feminism than all past examples. So make them do this, but of course they can't in the PMR. For these reasons, vote neg. Thank you. Okay. Cool. Order is flow it all on a new sheet because this man is not in see. Um, but if you don't do that, that's fine. I guess you can start on the uh, um, start on the framework debate, and then you can go to the counter advocacy, and then you can go to the alternative level analysis. Yeah, so framework, framework, counter roll of the ballots, um, and then the alt. Uh, fra sorry, sorry, framework, counter advocacy, and then the alt. Words. All right. You can start my time. 
Now, the overview to this round is that they've just conceded too much offense and they've conceded the counter roll with the ballot framing, and they've, uh, which means that we told you that they, at the end of the day, there's literally no way they can access the ballot and they've conceded the counter advocacy and the fact that it solves all of the uh, all of the advocacy. Let's go first onto the counter roll with the ballot and the framework arguments which they make to you. Look, at the end of the day, they've conceded the frame, the counter roll with the ballot because they haven't exceeded their role of the ballot. In debate, you need to have a role of the ballot as a place to garner offense and actually understand what you're going to be prioritizing because they don't extend their role of the ballot. You have to default to ours. From there, when you're looking at our counter roll of the ballot, it's a clear neg ballot because we're the only team that actually interrogates the desirability of a proposed tropical field at plant text, and they aren't. Uh, and you have to default to our interpretation for that, which means we tell you, uh, like at the speech act of reading QSFG is at least some sort of interrogation of a tropical field at plant text, which means we're probably winning on that layer over there. But if you don't buy that, you can go to the counter advocacy. There are a few main reasons which you're not going to be buying the perm. First of which is that, as Adam tells you, they conceded the arguments about around resistance and that specifically reading this uh, reading this language and not speaking in English is uniquely key. I.e., the UK colonization of Ireland argument. I.e., that English English language the English language is filling in and killing the movement. But secondly, they've conceded the argument that Mao is explicitly imperialist, which means that they don't have any access to solvency for the imperialism arguments, which they reread to you, which means that there's no way how they're able to actually gain access to solvency. They're actually able to get access to solvency for the arguments. They read to you at the point where they also can see that the counterpoint solves the entirety of the affirmative. You're buying that the only independent piece of offense in the round under that framing is the disadvantage. Uh, the disadvantage are like the imperialism's arguments, which we're reading under the counterpoint that it leads to culture death and the death of resistance, which means that we're the only side which has access to any unique any unique offense in the round. Um, okay, on the extinction framing. They're accessing, accessing extinction here in two ways. The, the little a end of this is that they're access, accessing the climate framing. We gave you the 2030 arguments about how specifically at least at least the, the policy making has a procedural method of which to solve climate change at the point where they can see the argument that capitalism and that, that Ma 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 Maoist movements explicitly destroy the environment to unify the base. You have to buy that there's no way of environmental solvency under their world. But the little b end of this is that we can see the state crushes argument, which explicitly impacts such a nuclear extinction, i.e. the state just nukes you as soon as you get successful, which means you have the entire world world dies, you have the little standard this, you have to exist to actually understand the epistemological arguments which are being read by them, which means that at the end of the day, that's an independent disadvantage, to the, that's an independent uh, disadvantage to their advocacy. Finally, on no solvency. If you buy none of what I've just said, you're still buying that they have no access to solvency and that their independent disadvantages extend the Naxalite and Maoist birth warrants. That's devastating for them because it means that they are still reifying problems with misogyny and trans misogyny, which they're talking to you about, which means that they are fundamentally still doing the bad things under the world of the alt, which they are criticizing. But the little B under this is that we tell you that they have conceded the warrant around epistemology and they've conceded the warrant around epistemology about how dialectic materialism and youthy fails because we aren't even able to understand the education which we're talking to you about. That's important because it means that if we aren't able to understand interconnected material realities, there's literally no way of solving your all. You can't even understand things to do the epistemological work which you're talking to you about. That's also why you're not going to be buying a PMR epistemology class because we tell you that they've conceded, number one, that argument which, specific, which specifically tells you that like we aren't able to gain access to epistemological change in the debate space through dialectic materialism. But number two, they've conceded the argument that the, the case have no solvency in the debate space, which means that even if they try to go for pre-field solvency, they can't do that because they've conceded the argument that case have no solvency in the debate space. Okay, overview to the round. At the end of the day, the counter plan is coming first, which means that like there's only one piece of offense you can vote on under the world of the counter plan. You're not buying the perm because we tell you that the perm is already uniquely leading to more imperialism. It doesn't solve the arguments of culture death that you're talking to you about. And that, that that's why that layer comes on top. And from there, you can go down to the extinction debate where we told you that you force extinction through the nuclear war arguments. That's a thing which would not have happened under the world of the under the world of the status quo and under the world of the negative if you, if you judge kick the counter plan. And they have no solvency independently and reify the same structures which they criticize. So for those reasons, you vote nag. Okay. The order is going to be framework. The uh, off, basically. Oh, framework, by the way, I mean, it's like the off framework. Uh, and then the rest of the off, I guess, like, you can do solvency first and the impacts. I guess they're kind of going to be meshed together. So if you want to like just float on one of the sheets, that's fine. And then it's going to be uh, actually, okay, let me redo this. I'm sorry. Do the AF framework, then do the AF impacts, then do the AF solvency, and then do the language pick. Is everyone good with that? Okay. Cool. 
time for five minutes. We'll start. Now, overview to the round is there's a massive mistake when they did way too little work on the language perm, and basically they're only going for they're only out at the end of this PMR will be on case terms, which will be constructed in the first place, which probably means that that level is going to be a prior die for the affirmative to solve a transmisogyny. Go to the framework. They tell you we never extend our framework, which means it's under their framework. That's fine. You conceded that we meet on T framework, which says that we are a topical fiat and plantics, which means that that we meet means we meet your role of the ballot, which means that at that level, there's no reason as to why you don't vote on this. But secondarily, we also extended the implications of our framework. You have conceded why we've extended like dialectical materialism and the idea that capitalism is contradiction, which means that they don't get access to the argument. Sure, we didn't fucking textually extend the role of the ballot, but there's no reason as to why that's good or like why that's necessary, which means that there's no reason as to why you're going to be evaluating this argument. Then go to the Mao versus Mao uh, like argument about why Mao is bad. They say every Maoist movement has failed in terms of imperialism, but this is a different characterization than what the LOC says. The LOC says Maoist movements have failed and the war is Mao Zedong himself. But as Sophia tells you, there's a distinction between Mao and Maoism, which means that their only empirical example is literally not even fucking applicant to the fucking uh, Oh, sorry, to the argument, I'm gonna stop swearing. To the argument that they have made, which basically means that at that point, it, th th there's a massive, there's a massive reason as to why they don't get access to any of their arguments. But also, they have conceded this is super damning. They have conceded that dialectical materialism is self-correcting because it learns from its contradictions and learns from its mistakes. Which... Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit confused as to what the argument you're making. So maybe the PUO doesn't make sense. But at least, as I understand it, we're making arguments around how like all Maoist movements are failing for like reasons like state crushes and reasons like dialectical materialism doesn't work. Which means that we're making arguments around like state cr about how all Maoist movements fail in the LOC, which means responses are new. Oh. In the yeah, so our argument is mainly against your idea that like all Maoism is imperialist, which was the argument in the LOC that we're responding to. But also, I'm just going to make kind of responses to that on the state framework. So, like, even if you don't buy that, I guess that's okay. But, like, again, it's just about, like, self-correction. That's cool. I was just flagging your judgment. Yeah, yeah, all right. I'm just saying that, like... The interconnectedness, like, the, sorry, like okay, like, movements, all right. So, yeah, speaking of that, thank you for reminding me, Rohan. Go back to the framework, specifically, go to dialectical materialism. Actually, we're going to say that dialectical materialism still solves all of our offices. Specifically, is the reason as to why you need to be able to evaluate life through dialectical materialism. There's a massive conception, which is that the root of all oppression is capitalism because we tell you that the access to material resources and the ability to live is controlled by markets for capitalism. That's an argument that was read in the 1AC. So, FIA fucking extended that. And uh, sorry, the FIA extended that. And now I'm extending it again, which means that the way in which people are dehumanized is by deterring, I mean, barring their access to material resources in the first place, which is how dehumanization is even controlled, which means that we control the internal link into all oppression because you cannot have that oppression unless we specifically justify who's dehumanized and who gets access to life and who doesn't. I don't care if you think that's a dumb argument. It was conceded, which means that they automatically show that even if capitalism isn't always going to be the central contradiction. Out of quo, it is, which is why that's why that's the root cause of all oppression. That means it is an a, a, a priority to be able to solve for capitalism, which means that even if they win their arguments that we're not accounting for colonialism, we say capitalism controls the internal link into colonialism. That's an argument that also goes conceded, which means that any risk that we like solve for capitalism is, means it's a try or die. Then they also talk about contradictions. Then. Sure. I think the explicit articulation of capitalism being uh, the interlink to colonialism is new. Again, maybe I missed it. Sure. Wait, I said that I said in my MG that like the capitalism is a central contradiction. There are sub contradictions, secondary contradictions like colonialism and gender, and that they're like internal link like controlled. That's yeah. the argument. Yeah, Sophia made that argument basically. Like she said that like specific colonialism and gender controlled by capitalism. If you don't buy that specifically, you've also conceded that, like, even if it's true that, like, there are secondary contradictions, dialectical materialism doesn't deny that. Central contradiction doesn't mean it's the only contradiction, which means that we can still solve for other things. We just have to solve for capitalism first, which means at the level where they've conceded the life analysis and they've conceded that the only way to understand capitalism is through dialectics, because otherwise you end up falling into bourgeois ideologies that fuck with your evaluation and basically give you bad ideologies. That means that we are the prior question. Go to all their climate change arguments. On climate change, they've conceded the Koch brothers' war. That's pretty damning because we tell you that specifically capitalism is oppositional to climate change uh, solvency specifically because, like, we tell you that, like, in order for the bourgeoisie and monopoly capitalism to exist, it funds money into being able to stop climate efforts. The war we give you for this is the Koch brothers, where we tell you they funded 25 million into climate opposition groups in order to be able to, like, uh, still, uh, still uh, engage in monopoly capitalism. That means that capitalism structurally will always uh, never be able to solve for climate change, which means that, that we say that our war outweighs theirs because they're only giving you specific instances like green tech and, like, some bu bullshit Stanford warrant that's literally made by capitalists, but we tell you that with is a structural warrant. It's a structural warrant for why the overarching structure of capitalism will never be able to solve. But they've also conceded that green tech is bad because REMs lead to lack of biodiversity, which is bad for climate change. That means that they are not able to solve and they have basically no risk of solvency, which means that they try to die for the affirmative. Then even if they win their arguments that Maoism is not good for solving for climate change, we tell you that specifically at least a risk that like um, uh, at least a risk that we deconstruct capitalism and uh, oh first of all again they can see DM self-correcting and we tell you at least a risk we self-correct. Okay and then finally 
finally, on the fem argument about like how Maoism wasn't good for feminism, we tell you that specifically, like, we already gave you a warrant about how specifically the Communist Party of Philippines was good for feminism, which means that uh, at this level, the empirical debate is basically a wash, but we give you the analytics of why capitalism controls the interlink. Again, also extend DM is self correcting. Go to uh, the way. We're going to say trans misogyny always everything specifically because, like, even if it's really, like, uh, the, even if extinction causes the death of individuals, we say that trans misogyny always on time frame because it's actively causing death of individuals right now, which means it doesn't matter if everybody else dies, but, like, it always has magnitude. We're going to say time frame controls the internal link into magnitude because we don't understand the magnitude of an impact without considering what happens before it. Like, the way an impact shapes, like, the uh, fall, uh, impact that follow it means that, like, when an impact happens first, it controls all other impacts that happen after, which means that trans misogyny controls the internal link into how we understand everything. And it's also the most proximal because yeah, it's the structure that we engage. Also, it skews evaluation because we can't even evaluate the rest of the impact unless we understand trans misogyny because it skews our way of thinking. They've conceded that. They say it's inevitable. We've already given you empirical solvency as to why it's the state's not inevitable. So it's a try to die. Go to the counter plan. They've conceded the severance permutation. They just say that it's like, oh, it excludes Irish. We say, no, it doesn't exclude Irish. You meant Sophia's argument that like, we also rupture the debate space along with you, which means that the perm is not competitive because, I mean, the kind of plan is not competitive because we both read different languages. We both rupture the linguistic imperialism and debate space that is causing the death of colonized individuals, which means that both the permutation and the counter plan, I mean, sorry, and the counter plan itself are able to solve. You can still read it. It's just that us also reading it means that there's no reason why you should get the ballot. And they say that Mandarin is an imperialist language. We specifically say that, again, look to our Mao versus Maoism distinction just because Mao is imperialist doesn't mean the entire language is imperialist. You should have a low threshold for this argument because it's very underexplained. Vote affirmative. Good round. Good round. I know y'all will need some time, so we'll give you a sec. <laughs> yeah, definitely give give us a couple minutes. Um, and we'll you know yell at you when we're ready to come back.
Okay, I was the last to enter, so I have the decision. 60 um, seconds, just give me 60 seconds. I'm going to grab everyone. Yes, 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 of course. Um, I'm going to turn on my camera just because I think it's right. Cool, we're good. Okay. Um, oh, can I go and uh, like give the decision, things like that? I've never done that. Okay. Actually, I have. That was a lie. I forgot I've done this. Okay. Anyways, so congratulations, everyone, for, uh, well, making it to the TOC. Um, you know, like I have seen you all, all, all four debaters here debate before, and you have done very well. I have not seen you in a while either, and so seeing you, you know, improve and improve your orientation is also very nice. So you should be very proud of yourselves. TOC is about capstone after all, and so remember, one loss does not define you. Your entire career matters, and you know, having come out of debate, I have to say that like it's the process that matters, not the actual result. And I'm sure everyone else in this call agrees as well. Uh, having said that, uh, it is a 2-1 decision for the opposition, Noiva. <clears throat> cool. Um, I sat, so I guess I go first. Um, cool. So uh, in a rare break for me, I end up voting for the uh, affirmative um, on MLM. Let me find my word. Okay, here it is. Okay, cool. Um, so I'll just read my RFD, and if you have any questions for me, you can um, let me know afterwards. But anyways, this was a killer round. Um, I know I've said this a couple times, but like, please keep doing this in college. Uh, you are all like stellar examples of what this activity should be, and uh, you should keep doing it. Um, but this was super dope. Uh, anyways, at the end of the day, I end up voting AF on the try or die framing from the PMR. I'm not sure why the neg would kick framework T in front of me, but I, that's fine, uh, like given like what happened. Um, I, here's where I end up voting. I first looked to the framework level of this debate. The block tells me that the counter roll of the ballot is controlling offense generation in this round because the AF didn't explicitly extend their PMC roll of the ballot. I'm a little hung up on the specific text of the counter roll of the ballot when they say that the counter roll of the ballot is to interrogate the desirability of proposed topical fiat plan text, but then the negative doesn't read a fiat plan text. That's fine because the PMR tells me that even if they didn't explicitly extend the roll of the ballot, they're still winning and we meet that they're topical and fiated, which is also kind of dubious, but I probably end up evaluating this like level of debate as a wash and looking elsewhere on the framework for an answer. I think that the block is way behind on the framing question when one, they kick the framework T and two, only talk about the counter roll of the ballot in the block while the PMR is telling me that capitalism is the primary contradiction and thus dialectical materialism as a solvency mechanism. That is, we have to solve cap first and then other contradictions is compelling when the block doesn't do that sequencing for me. So I'm granting the AF the framework level of this debate. So then I look at this round through a lens of who can best solve the harms of the squo. The negative reads a language pick, but the block does not tell me why one, Gaelic is key, or two, the perm doesn't function. The block tells me that the perm doesn't solve imperial violence, but I'm not given sufficient reasons to how they solve the root cause of imperialism, that is capitalism. Uh, so I'm granting that the perm is competitive. Uh, the PMR does enough to explain that they solve the root cause analysis and that the perm is probably preferable absent like a clear reason to prefer the counter plan alone. Finally, even if I'm not voting on the perm, I looked at the solvency layer. The block gives me a few disads. One, cap solves climate change. Two, the naturalite disad. And three, that the uh, like the Mao birth disad. Uh, first, the block tells me that cap solves climate change, but the PMR responses to the analysis that uh, proletariat feminism controls the internal link to capitalism indicts, uh, indicts means that even if green tech can solve, the criticism is controlling global uniqueness on the solvency of the turn. On the Mao disadvantage, the MG and the PMR both explain that Mao isn't Maoism and that those policies aren't Maoist. And finally, the Naxalite DA is probably a wash when the communist part of the Philippines and the warrant, the Naxalite warrants essentially take out each other. This means I'm voting on the advocacy for being able to solve for the harms of trans misogyny in this round. All right, I'll go next. I also voted, oh no, not also, I voted for the negation. Um, let's start with the framework. I'm gonna be real, I'm, in general, the affirmation was ahead on the framework debate. I didn't uh, like get a whole lot of like strong responses to a lot of the things that the uh, affirmation was saying. So let's start with the roll about it, ballot versus the counter roll of the ballot. I didn't see AF like explicitly extending that, obviously in the MG, like textually stating the roll of the ballot, but I don't think that that's an automatic reason to go with the negations counter roll of the ballot. I feel like that was a pretty weak argument, but I did eventually have to go with the counter roll of the, counter -roll of the ballot regardless because I didn't see that the affirmation was 
fulfilling their own role of the ballot, which I'll get onto later when I talk about the alternative. Um, onto dialectical materialism, the aff affirmation tells me that dialectical materialism is self-correcting. I don't really know what that means. I didn't really get like a clear explanation of it, but I also didn't hear a response from Neg on that. I also buy that capitalism is a prerequisite to other forms of oppression, which I didn't, I don't really see how that's like contradictory. Like I, I think you can solve these, I think you can solve all types of forms of oppression. And if you just put one before the other doesn't mean that like it's automatically more important. It just means that it gives you access to other forms of oppression. That's what I understood from it. Um, when it comes to Maoism, I also flow aft because neg negation like conflates Mao the person with Maoism the movement. And I believe that they are completely different things. But the reason why I eventually go with the negation in this, in this round is mainly on like the alternative level. I don't see the solvency, right? Uh, on in like the MO, basically a lot of the responses that the MO were making on the solvency level, the alternative was like completely unresponded to by the affirmation. If we look at like, um, well, the only thing that I didn't really like, like very much was the whole extinction scenario. I'm not a huge fan of like, those kinds of very improbable impacts like nuclear war. But the the main things that I, I extended from the MO was like, MO tells me that there's no solvency because they've read this K before in other rounds. There's no real solvency being generated. How there's uh, the bright line is basically converting everyone to MLM. And if they don't convert everyone to MLM, then they have no solvency whatsoever. There was like no response to that coming out of the affirmation. Um, they also say that this is like a race to the bottom and like reading more Ks is going to lead to more burnout. There's no like real world um, debate space like response coming from the affirmation on that as well. Like I feel like a lot of these things were just kind of dropped by the PMR. And I understand that there's a lot to get through, but yeah, that was like mainly the reason why I had to go with the negation. Um, <clears throat> then we go into the counter plan. I mean, the counter plan is like, I, I see how it is independent offense and I see how it like is important, but also once the affirmation reads the Mandarin text, I'm kind of like, now it's like kind of the same thing. But the the thing that I did that did sway me towards voting neg on the counter plan is the fact that the negation points out that, you know, the Mandarin language is uh, an imperialist actor, right? Like China is an imperialist actor. And the affirmation tells me that the language itself isn't inherently imperialist, but like the whole point of the counter plan is to say that like, just because we're all speaking English right now doesn't mean that we're all like imperialist actors it's really saying that like if we don't try to cherish and uh, try to like uphold the indigenous languages then we're not going to be able to solve for these issues of uh like oppression and I feel like there's a difference between reading Mandarin and reading Irish so that's kind of why I went for uh the counter plan and then on the um that's about it basically oh the perm uh the perm is the last thing I didn't really buy the perm I just understood that like the language of the, the imperialist actor of China is incompatible with the language of Ireland, Ireland, which is an indigenous population. So that's why I didn't buy the pick. All right. Any questions? Cool. We're good. We just want to hear Henry's RFT and then if we have questions, we'll ask. Yeah. Uh, could we stop the recording for my RFT? <laughs> sure.